In today's video, we're talking about the keto diet. Welcome to the video guys. My name is Tyler, also known as the Fit Chemist, and I help people take control of their lives by taking control of their fitness and nutrition habits so that ultimately we can lead healthier and happier lives. So if you're new here, welcome. Please consider subscribing. Turn those notification bells on so you don't miss when I post new videos. And if you are returning, welcome back. I'm so glad that you are here. In my last video, we answered the question, how does the keto diet compare to other diets for fat loss and is it superior for fat loss? So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check that out now. I'll put a little time card somewhere up here but as you know on this channel we are not only just interested in fat loss we are also interested in building muscle so that when we do lose fat we look our best so spoiler alert if you haven't seen that last video the answer to that question was no the keto diet is not actually superior for fat loss but after doing the research for that video it got me wondering how does the keto diet compare to other diets when it comes to muscle gain my intuition tells me that the keto diet would not actually be superior for muscle gain compared to higher carbohydrate diets a quick Google search actually helped confirm or strengthen this hypothesis. So I found an article posted on a website called Perfect Keto that states, if you prefer higher intensity exercise like sprinting or weightlifting and enjoy working out more than three times a week, you may want to consider adjusting your keto diet to fit your carb needs. Sticking to the standard ketogenic diet won't likely be enough in your case. Why might that be? Well, if we flash back to sixth grade health class when we were learning the difference between anaerobic and aerobic exercise, if you'll remember, anaerobic exercise is very short, intense bouts of exercise that are fueled by carbohydrates as an energy source and do not require oxygen, hence the term anaerobic. Weightlifting is a perfect example of an anaerobic activity. So if you're on the ketogenic diet, you're not gonna be consuming that many carbs. You're probably gonna be consuming less than 50 grams per day. And a lot of that is gonna come from fibrous veggies, which means you don't have a lot of glucose or glycogen in your system. If that's the case and weightlifting is an anaerobic activity, then you're not really supplying your body with the energy source that it wants for that specific activity. If you're not doing that, I would think that workout quality would suffer if you're on the keto diet. And if your workout quality suffers, you're not gonna be able to lift as much. And ultimately that's gonna hurt your gains in the long term. Although intuition is a good starting place, I would say it's not necessarily robust enough to actually guide us on our fitness journeys. So the good news for you is that I did all the research for you. All you have to do is sit back and enjoy this little summary that I put together and let's see what the science says about keto and if it's killing your gains. Let's first take a look at some studies that could be seen as potentially positive when it comes to building muscle while on the keto diet. As always, linked down below will be all of the studies that I mentioned. If you don't have access to them, please feel free to reach out to me. I should have access through my university. I'd be more than happy to send them to you. But again, I just wanted to remind you that all the studies will be down in the description below. So if you're curious and reading them for yourselves or you wanna know more about a particular study that I mentioned, go ahead and check that out. The first study that I wanna mention looked at 20 men who were normal weight. So typically a lot of studies will look at men who are obese. So these men were actually normal weight. And what they did was they put 12 of them into a keto group, they put eight of them into a non-keto group, and over a six week span, they just measured their hormone levels, so at zero weeks, so the starting point, three weeks, the halfway point, and then six weeks was the final point. And then what they found was that testosterone and cortisol levels did not actually decrease while on the keto diet. There are two potential drawbacks to this study, one of them being that they did not mention any sort of exercise. So this video is obviously concerned with weight gain and lifting in the gym. So if they weren't doing any exercise, it's not really a direct comparison. And also the participants in this study were just instructed to eat enough calories to maintain weight so calories weren't controlled. This study demonstrates that if you do choose to go on the keto diet, that testosterone is not actually going to take a dip, which would be bad for muscle gain. So that's a good thing, right? Well, to play devil's advocate, I do wanna point out another study that actually saw an opposite effect. In this study, they took 20 men again, and 12 of them were put into a control group, and eight were put into a keto group. And what they did was they had all the participants do intense cycling for one hour, three days in a row. And then on the fourth day, it was just sort of a rest day for them. And what they looked at was their hormone profiles each of those days after doing the exercise, and then during the rest day on that fourth day. They found that the keto group had a 43% reduction in their testosterone testosterone to cortisol ratio, whereas the group that was eating carbs only had a 3% reduction. So to them, that signified that increasing your carbohydrate or keeping carbohydrate intake high will actually help with your testosterone levels while you're doing intense levels of exercise. 
Granted, this study was only over three days, and again, it was cycling, which is more of an aerobic activity than it is anaerobic. So personally, what I would like to see is a weightlifting study over, let's say, eight to 10 weeks that actually does the same sort of thing. It measures testosterone, cortisol, and other hormone profiles, but something that's a little more honed in on weightlifting itself. Now that we talked about testosterone levels and how that might impact our gains while on the keto diet, we can look at some positive studies when it comes to strength performance while you are on the keto diet. One study looked at eight gymnasts over a period of 30 days while they're on the keto diet. So at the beginning, they did various performance measurements. So like chin-ups and just a bunch of other exercises that would be performed in a gymnastic setting. At the end of the 30 days while on the keto diet, they did the same performance measurements and they found that there wasn't a significant reduction. Those same participants had a three month washout period Period, and then they had another 30 day period on a traditional Western diet or higher carbohydrate diet. They did the same sort of measurements. And again, they saw that there wasn't that much of a reduction. So to them, what this indicated is even though you're on the keto diet, you might actually be able to maintain some of your strength and some of your performance. But the good news in that study is that they also lost a pretty significant amount of fat mass. So it does seem to indicate that the keto diet can help with body composition while maintaining strength. Another study found that cyclists were not affected after going on the keto diet for four weeks, which again, suggests that you can maintain some of the strength performance. However, cycling, again, is more of an aerobic activity and doesn't necessarily directly correlate to weightlifting, which is an anaerobic exercise. And lastly, one study looked at 25 college-aged men. They split them into two groups, so non-keto and keto, and I think they had them resistance training as well for an eight to 10 week period. And what they actually found in this study is that the keto group had a better reduction in fat mass and a better increase in lean body mass. So after hearing all of these studies, you might be thinking, great, the keto diet is gonna help me increase my lean body mass and it's also gonna reduce fat mass. So while some of the studies suggest that, I think it's important that we take a look at what some other studies say in terms of negative aspects of keto diet and muscle building. So we're gonna take a look at some studies that could be considered negative when it comes to being on the keto diet and trying to build muscle. But before we do, if you're getting some value out of this video, go ahead and smash that like button for me. And today's question of the day is, have you done the keto diet? And if you have, have you noticed any decreased performance while in the gym and how did it affect your lifts? Let me know in the comments down below. And with that, let's get back into it. So the first study under this category of potentially negative impacts on muscle gain on the keto diet highlighted five New Zealand endurance athletes. So again, more towards the aerobic side of things, but they were on the keto diet for 10 weeks and they actually saw a mean reduction of exhaustion time by two minutes. So what that means is that it took two minutes less to become fully exhausted during their endurance training exercises. I do wanna mention this study only looked at five participants though. So because it's not necessarily directly correlated to weightlifting and it's such a small population size, I would say the strength of this study is not necessarily top tier and we should take it with a grain of salt. A study done by Schoenfeld and co-workers looked at 21 women who were put on an eight week resistance training program Half of them were put in a keto group and half of them were put in a non-keto group. So you guessed it, at this point, the trend that we've seen so far is that the keto group actually does lose more body fat. So that was true in this study as well. But they noted between the two groups, there wasn't a significant change in lean body mass. So there wasn't really a benefit to one or the other. But what they did note is that the non-keto group actually had a pretty significant increase in their bench and squat. There was another study with a very similar design. So they looked at 21 women, again, on an eight week resistance training program, except this time they were actually in a calorie deficit, which I'm not sure why they did this because if you're in a calorie deficit, you're not really in a great place to be building muscle to begin with. However, they did find over those eight weeks that both groups actually did increase their muscle strength. However, the group that was consuming more carbohydrates saw a 5% greater increase in their strength. Another case study done by Eric Helms looked at five Olympic lifter and power lifter athletes on the keto diet over an eight week period. They found that two of them actually increased strength, two of them maintained their strength, and then one of them actually decreased their strength, while four out of the five participants actually had a pretty significant reduction in fat mass. During this eight week period, they also used subjective measures and found that all the participants ranked higher in terms of need for rest and recovery. So although the keto diet does seem to be beneficial for reducing your body fat and changes in body composition, at least subjectively, it suggests that the keto diet is not better for performance. Another study by Dominic Diagostino took 25 college age men, split them into two groups, keto and non-keto, put them on a resistance training program for 11 weeks and they measured their body fat percentage, lean body mass, power and strength. Both groups maintained their strength and power while reducing their fat mass and increasing their lean body mass. However, the non-keto group saw a two times increase in lean body mass when compared to the keto group 
ultimately suggesting that consuming carbohydrates while doing a lifting program could be more beneficial than doing the keto diet. And I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the study that I already covered in the previous video. So if you wanna see this explanation more in depth, go ahead and check that out now. But in this study, their participants were in a calorie surplus for eight weeks, lifting four days per week. And they actually saw that the keto group lost one pound of lean body mass, whereas the non-keto group gained three pounds of lean body mass. So again, this is suggesting that consuming carbohydrates is actually more beneficial for increasing your muscle mass. So I think some of the studies that I covered in the second half of this video are a little more convincing to me, coupled with the fact that there have been two studies that show increased levels of insulin are actually protein sparing, meaning your body is not gonna be in an increased state of breaking down protein, which is what makes up your muscle. And there's a meta-analysis that has demonstrated the keto diet actually greatly suppresses your appetite, which is gonna make it much harder to be in a calorie surplus, which is required if you're going to be on a bulk and trying to gain muscle. So I think all of those sort of combined together suggest that the keto diet is not optimal for building muscle. I do think that some of the studies we talked about in the first half of this video suggest that the keto diet could be okay for maintaining strength performance but not necessarily gaining muscle, but ultimately I agree with a quote by Eric Trexler that says, the current evidence doesn't suggest that it's impossible to gain muscle on a ketogenic diet, but its effects on appetite and high intensity exercise performance make it hard to view keto as the ideal dietary approach for gaining muscle. So hopefully at this point you've watched both of my videos on keto and you realize that there's not necessarily anything magical about this diet when when it comes to fat loss or muscle gain. If you're someone that can go no carb or low carb, no problem, then maybe the keto diet is for you because ultimately adherence is what's gonna be the most important factor, regardless if your goal is to reduce body fat or increase lean body mass. If you are someone who can't give up carbs though, then ultimately that diet is not going to be sustainable for you and you don't have to give up carbs to have success and hit your goals. All right guys, that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below and again if you are new here be sure to subscribe turn those notification bells on so you don't miss when i post new videos because i post new videos every single friday you do not want to miss when they go live and with that i'll see you in the next video